Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of the classification of living organisms. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello there, and welcome to this tutorial on classification of living organisms. So in today's tutorial, we're going to have, be having a look at classification basics. We're going to understand how we can classify organisms and also have a look at evolutionary trees, which we've looked at briefly in a previous tutorial in the last session. So lots of specification points today. So this is our first specification point. I'd recommend just watching the video and at the end, just coming back to the specification points and making sure you understand exactly what you're expected to know. Okay, so living organisms must be classified in order to compare between them and see the differences between different types of organisms. So this system was devised in the 1700s. So organisms are split into the following systems, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So this is how they are split. So we'll go through what each of these mean now. So organisms are split into five kingdoms. So plants, animals, fungi, protists, and prokaryotes make up the five kingdoms. Phylum lies in between kingdom and class. So the phylum of an organism is a generalization based on the body plan of an organism. So the class of humans is called data. Class is another division in organisms, so you may be familiar with some of these divisions, and they include mammals, fish, reptiles, and birds, and humans are mammals. Order comes from class, comes after class, sorry, and so orders of organisms can be defined. So mammals are divided into bats, carnivores, rodents, and many other sections. Families are made from classes, so families are a subdivision of class. So birds, for example, can be divided into families of pigeons and doves and ducks, along with many more. Now the genus is a subdivision of families, so families can be further divided into the genus. An example of a genus is Felix, that of domestic cats. And the species is the final division. So we generally know what an organism is through its species. It's the final division of an organism. So just to relate this back to humans, this is our breakdown in terms of classification. So you can see that finally, the end breakdown, so in terms of species, we are sapiens. So note that there is no overlap, so no organism can only be in one group at each level. So there are more organisms in the early groups and less and less as you move down the classification system. So it starts off broad and then it narrows it down. And organisms in the same lower groups are more closely related. So for example, organisms in the same species are more closely related than organisms in the same domain. Now, just remember that the classification system is continually evolving and changing as new types of analyses are discovered. So one example is gene sequencing. So make sure you understand this categorization of organisms and make sure you understand how to write this in terms of writing the genus with a capital letter and the species all in, le in lowercase letters. So for example, with humans, Homo sapiens, Homo is written with a capital letter, whereas sapiens is with a lowercase letter. And then underline the name. Okay. So, as microscopes have developed over time, they have allowed us to improve our understanding. So, this has allowed us to draw distinctions between different organisms. 
and we can use this understanding to learn more and more about different sorts of organisms pertaining to their biochemical processes and other such processes. So, for example, Linnaeus struggled to see the differences between lichens and mosses. So as time went by, chemical analyses has led to the advent of Carl Rose's three domain system. So this model was only introduced in the 1970s after RNA analysis, but it involves dividing organisms into three categories. So one, we have archaea, number two, bacteria, and number three, eukaryota. So let's go through these. So archaea are more primitive bacteria that have become accustomed to living in extreme environments. So they have no nucleus. And examples include the halo bacteria. So archaea have no nucleus, remember that, and actually this means that they are more primitive. Bacteria, so these cells are the true bacterial cells. They are again prokaryotic, and examples include the spirochetes. Eukaryota is the rest of the organism, so these include fungi, plants, animals and protists. So anything with a membrane-bound nucleus fits into this section. Whereas note bacteria don't have a membrane-bound nucleus, their DNA is contained within a plasmid or within a loop of bacterial DNA which just kind of floats around in the cytoplasm. And we've already said that archaea don't have nuclei. So in terms of defining eukaryota, anything with membrane-bound DNA, membrane-bound nucleus, fits into this section. Okay, so let's have a look at evolutionary trees. So evolutionary trees show the relationship between species. Now, living organisms are mapped using current data. However, fossils, as we saw in the previous tutorial, are used to map extinct organisms. These trees therefore span generations upon generations and show how extinct organisms are linked to living organisms. So as we can see here, organisms that are closer together on the evolutionary tree, like Aquifex and Thermotoga, are more closely related than Aquifex and Diplomonads, for example they branch at different points of the tree, whereas these two branch at very close by points of the tree. But we can see that all of these organisms have originated from a single common ancestor, so that's what they all have in common. Right, let's go through some practice questions. So I'll read through these, you can then pause the video, have a go, and select which statements are true, and then we'll go through the answers. So A, organisms and kingdoms are more closely related than organisms and classes. B, the three domains are bacteria, eukaryota, and archaea. C, Linnaeus created the three domain system. And D, the classification system has not been updated at all for many years. Okay, so pause the video here and have a go. Right, so we'll go through some answers. So A is false because the lower down the classification, the more closely related the organisms are. So Classes are lower down than kingdoms, therefore organisms in classes are more closely related than organisms in kingdoms. B is true, so these are the three domains. C is false, Carl Ways created the system. And D is false because we are told that it constantly changes with new analytical techniques such as genetic sequencing. So well done for today, lots of specification points, but in general very kind of generalised theory points rather than the specifics that you have to get from this, apart from the classification system, so make sure you learn that. Well done for today and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.